Oh my goodness, it is happening. Hello everyone, I am Greg T. Dale and welcome to D&D News. I can't believe I've been running around like a, uh, you know, ice dragon with its head cut off. Mm. I am here and I am going to say all a bunch of things about what's happening in uh, the D&D world. It is good to see you. I see uh, everyone there. Hey, Obo Crazy. What's up, DC, DC Lasser? I'm going to say that's, that's how it is instead of de, de Lasser. Uh, but Rio, uh, what's up, Merciful DM? How is it going, Lisa? Uh, I can't wait to get to all the fun stuff we will show from the Adventurers League, Dungeon Masters Guild. We've got an awesome new D&D Rewind, which we'll be showing at um uh around 3 30 that's my current plan anyway uh how is my how's my hair I, I was wearing a a skull cap thing today but it's looking it's looking okay i think i might have put in too much pomade but uh you know like like every good red dead redemption character uh you can never have too much pomade in your hair mm. dc lasser good i'm glad i got it right i love it uh, what's up, Akisha? Good to see you. Uh, bean Uno, what is going on? Uh, I don't know, but you got one bean, and that's more beans than I currently have. So you've, you're you're a okay. Hopefully soon you'll have bean dose, uh, and then maybe uh, a bean trace, bean catorce. Uh, who knows? We'll we'll be doing all of the words out there, uh, which mean Spanish things. Yes, I know Elwarius. I didn't think there was going to be any news today either. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining on the thought that we would potentially do this. It is still a snowmageddon here in the Seattle town. There is currently, uh, around my house, 12 inches of snow that's rapidly becoming slush and water uh, soon. Um, but it is three. The sun's going to go down in about two and a half hours, four hours or so. Uh, so it'll be dark again and maybe freeze over on ice, but we never know. Um, but it is here and I'm happy uh, I was able to make it in. <laughs> and uh, now I'm laughing at Hero Biscuit saying, I can't wait for the bean chinera, uh, which is, 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 that's amazing. Good stuff. Uh, Flash Fletch 33, good to see you. Uh, I have somehow survived. I'm not really sure how. It has been a, a crazy few days uh, here in Seattle. Uh, as you may have heard uh, or seen from all of the social media postings. I feel a little bit bad. A lot of folks I know have been moving to this area thinking about what a great, fun, creative, uh, natural environment this is. Wouldn't it be great if we lived there? And now all of you are like, I don't know if I want to live somewhere where it gets this much snow uh, and can't deal with it. But the good part about all the precipitation, both rain and snow that happens here in Seattle is that it is perfect weather to stay inside around a table put on a great fire and oh, uh, play some video games no play some tabletop games uh play uh dungeons and dragons uh dungeon mayhem maybe some avalon hill games i played dungeons and dragons last night i totally thought that my uh gaming group in west seattle would abandon me i sent out a note being like hey guys with all the snow everything that's happening you know just sounding off what do you think do you think we should play um, we're, we're going through our Dragon Heist campaign um, and have had to skip a whole bunch of sessions in the fall because of, you know, life getting in the way. So I assume this was going to be another one of those sessions. But each one of them, uh, to a T, said they would come for the snow. And then one of them decided, well, it was his birthday and it, he wouldn't be able to attend because of uh, uh, his wife having something special planned for him. But he would have come if, the, if it wasn't his birthday. Uh, and so that's pretty amazing. Dedication. Everybody was really excited to... Uh, in their case, get out of the house and for me to host people in the house uh, playing through uh, chapter two of uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, which has been super fun. And we've been using the Bibi and Grimm's um, Platinum Edition stuff that comes along with it, which is always a pleasure. Uh, they started to look into it a little bit more. I'm like, ooh, wait, hold on. There's a little bit of spoiler, spoilery stuff. Don't quite dig into all those artifacts just yet. Mm. All right. So I agree with you, Chairman Powell, that Seattle weather is the best weather, but not everybody has an affinity for snow like I do. Um, you know, even the amount of snow that we've had here, it's been a bit touch and go with travel and commuting and things like that. But I've really enjoyed just seeing the fluffy white stuff out there come down like crazy. Um, I'm hoping that the next day or two is 
clear because I'm traveling. Uh, I'm going to New York City for a week and a half. Uh, I'm going to be there a long, long time. Um, New York Toy Fair is this weekend. It is a big deal in the Hasbro uh, toy scene. Uh, there's going to be lots of things going on there, including us talking about how D&D is pretty cool um, to a lot of investors, and uh, that's that's always fun. Uh, so me and Nathan Stewart will be there. I'll be sure to post lots of pictures about what it's like uh, in the D&D area for uh, Hasbro. Um, it's very exciting, and uh, I can't wait. And I just get to be back in New York City, where I lived for 10 years. And uh, gallivant around, hang out, uh, going to the Javits Center, everyone's favorite convention center, and uh, maybe just eat pizza walking on the streets of New York is basically what I want to do the whole time I'm there. So uh, I look forward to that, and I'll be posting lots of fun pictures with my slice in hand, uh, and I look forward to that. But what that means is no D&D news, or at least I won't be doing D&D news a week from today. Um, there will be none of that. There will be a dice camera action uh, most likely coming. At just like there is a dice camera action happening in 40, uh, 50 minutes. There is a new episode, 129. All of the uh, cast is going to be there. No guests uh, for this episode, but we're really excited. We actually had a whole bunch of alternate plans. Uh, so this show is going to go on no matter what. But it should be pretty much back up to normal since most of the folks like Pelham uh, and Chris Perkins and myself have gotten into the office to do this little block of content uh, here on the D&D Twitch channel. There's going to be a couple of uh, more hiccups uh, as the schedule adjusts to the snow, but look for it next week um, to get back mostly to normal. The only thing that you should be aware of for scheduling-wise from our studio is the fact that uh, I won't be, me and Shelly won't be recording uh, Dragon Talk live on uh, the next two Fridays. So no episode streaming live this Friday or the following Friday. We'll be back uh, live in the office on March 1st. Um, so look for that. Uh, we have a great episode lined up for that. And I don't want to necessarily spill the beans on quite yet, but want to make sure. Um, so that's, that's good to know. Uh, there will be a spoilers and swag uh, happening March 8th, uh, so keep your, your eyes peeled for that. Uh, there will be continuing to be tons of amazing um, Dungeons & Dragons content coming at you uh, from here. Um, and uh, one of them I want to tell you about is uh, definitely going to dovetail with one of the fun things happening in the press. Uh, so here I'm going to click and make sure we have all the images available for me here. Uh, but yes, uh, so Kate Welch. Game designer here at Dungeons and Dragons uh, was on a Digital Trends Live show, and uh, it was a really great interview, uh, only about 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, and she talks all about the resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons, part power culture, part embracing technology. The classic RPG is gaining mainstream traction. Uh, there's a little image of what the live interview was like. Um, go check it out if you possibly can at the link that Lauren shows below. Um, the episode is in there. It was very cool, and she got to plug, uh, of course, her um, uh, new show, uh, Welch's Game Juice. Uh, we are in episode three, I believe, of that. So four should be happening uh, this Thursday at... Um, and I want to make sure I get it right. I think it's that... Uh, you know what? Now I'm going to make sure I don't get the time wrong because I did get the time wrong at one point. And so need to clarify for all things 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Pacific time on Thursdays. Check those uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Kate Welch doing those amazing uh, replays of Baldur's Gate, the first thing, the first uh, um, iteration of Baldur's Gate enhanced by our friends at Beamdog. Um, good stuff. Again, go check out that interview if you can't. And, uh, of course, watch Kate in the C-Team as Rosie B. Stinger. Uh, fun stuff all around. Uh, we're still kind of do a TBD, whether or not Thursday will be here, but it looks like the roads are mostly clear for all that. Um, so, going back to other stuff that was in the news. Let me allow my machine to catch up and not think that it is going to overload. How are you guys doing? Other parts of the country and or the world, are you under as much snow as Seattle is? Uh, I know there was at least some other precipitation somewhere else, but wanted to make sure uh, you guys uh, were safe uh, and or enjoying the snow out there. Is that true? Mm. Uh, so other fun stuff out there. Um, wanted to uh, highlight this. Check this out. 
Um, speaking of Baldur's Gate, as we just were, um, Beamdog is teaming up with Skybound Games, and they're going to bring six of uh, the po most popular RPGs out there. Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Neverwinter Nights, bringing all of those to console play. Uh, so that is pretty exciting, um, and uh, I, I can't wait. Um, Polygon was, was nice enough to report on this, uh, but I think it's really cool for... Um, you know, folks who play only on uh, the console to be able to experience those games. Now, I know there's many kind of PC purists out there that might say uh, that uh, the only way to play those isometric RPGs is with a mouse and keyboard. Um, you uh, have a point, but I want to tell you that there are way multiple, multiple ways to play uh, Dungeons and & Dragons, and we don't discriminate against any of those ways, per se. So, um, Check it out. More uh, more people have the install base of um, the uh, the consoles for for Coach Cow Co Coach Couch Co-op play. Uh, so I'm hoping that's a big part of these releases, uh, which which should be pretty cool. Uh, another thing I wanted to highlight that was in the press recently was uh, our friend Gavin Sheehan from Bleeding Cool did an awesome review of Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Um, thank you uh, for for all of these great thoughts. Um, there is a lot of interesting um, uh, quotes in here to pull out. This one is pretty great. There are great opportunities for DMs to have their run of this world and force people into situations they may not like. Um, and uh, that is basically, you know, the um, formula for any good drama, honestly, out there. Uh, so that's really cool that uh, Gavin over at Bleeding Cool was able to highlight that as a big part of uh, what makes Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica great. Um, I just love that so many people are getting into Magic the Gathering now due to Arena, as well as all the fun stuff they've got going on in Ravnica and uh, the uh, most you know, recent uh, pack um Gosh, why am I not? It's a guilt, guilt, ascension. I don't know. It's uh, I, I'm I'm messing up the the name, but it's very exciting, and I love that people can now play into uh, that world of Ravnica using D and D rules. Um, there's another pullout quote I want to tell you about, which uh, Gavin says. Uh, there's a there's even a section called complications, which I find to be funny as hell. Just in case you feel like you need to give people a reason to be in conflict in Ravnica, which comes with a D8 role to add a secondary clan issue to the mix and adding intrigue along the way. There are great opportunities for DMs to have their run of this world. Oh yeah, and, th and that is where that quote ends with the one that was uh, on display there. Um, I love that. I love highlighting uh, all that fun stuff. In fact, I wish I had had uh, something like complications to roll on when I was playing in my D&D session last night uh, because there was a few vocal uh, players of like, oh, I just want to I just want to hit something. I just want to you know have a battle and I didn't have a, a, a uh, encounter planned per se and so I wing I won it I winged it I winged it I winged it um by throwing in a wounded medusa hmm what do you think about that it ended up being a pretty good uh you know just bad to to cap off the end of the night with a battle there so that was super fun all right um the final thing uh that I want to have everyone know about is that unearthed arcana was not released this Monday. Um, for those of you who don't know, Unearthed Arcana is our um, playtest uh, column that is put up usually every month or so with new content that we are testing out and want to get feedback on from the playtest community. Um, there have been a few pretty awesome uh, installments recently of UA, uh, including Sidekicks, uh, which I found really kind of fascinating, as well as of ships in the sea, uh, detailing what it's like to run a ship in the uh, in, a, in a fantasy rule set like Dungeons and Dragons. As part of our delay uh, from last month's uh, user user interface, no, that's UI. This is a UA. Um, we said uh, what the next Unearthed Arcana was going to be, and it was for the Artificer. Uh, and uh, it is still being worked on. It is furiously getting to a point where we would need feedback from you on in the D and D community. So um, it's being worked on right now. It is not posted, but it will be posted sometime in February, most likely um, closer to the end of February. To be quite honest, we just want to make sure it's up to a point where 
uh, fans commenting on it would be as most instructive about the design for that class going forward. It's pretty exciting, and uh, I know it's a, it's a big step. So and I, know, and I know a lot of people are excited about it, so I wanted to make sure we were as transparent as possible about uh, why that wasn't coming out right now and when you can expect it. We don't have the exact date, like I said, but look for it in uh, the Mondays to come, probably nearest to the end of February. But Jeremy Crawford has definitely said February, so it shouldn't go uh, too far past that. Um, and Gray Raven, I don't believe it has ever wanged it. I don't think that's true. That's crazy. Hey, Fannies and Grounds College. Uh, if I see a little bit out of it or tired, it's because I've been running around uh, like crazy dealing with all of the snow and weather that's been impacting travel and commuting here in Seattle. And I'm getting ready to, this is one of those last days before I'm going to be out of the office for a week and a half. Uh, so I don't know if you've ever experienced that in your job, but it is always really stressful for me getting everything together, making sure all of uh, the team has all the information that they need in order to do their jobs well and that my absence doesn't become a uh, detriment to other people's projects going forward. So I always feel a lot about stress about that and as well as travel and packing and, you know, definitely not like I'm going to a new city in New York, but it is a city that takes a little bit more forethought into how you pack and uh, prepare for traveling around within it. So yeah, if, I'm, if it feels like I'm a little bit out of it, that's that's what that's what's going on. There is a lot. Uh, so so thank you for for pointing it out there. Uh, I'm doing okay right now, uh, but it is also very true that uh, it is important to talk about those things. So I appreciate it. Um, we had a conversation with Michael Mallon, uh, the id DM last week for the Dragon Talk podcast. That episode should be coming out on Thursday, um, but it was a lot about exactly that, making sure that it was okay to talk about not being okay and uh, to communicate that way. And um, I've been getting more and more vocal about, um, you know, kind of my personal well-being and, well and how that all goes. So uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate the check-in. Thanks a lot, man. You get a high five from me. Um, so... Uh, uh, let's move on to Fun Adventurers League news. What do you guys think about that? You think, you think we can do it? So, uh, for those of you who don't know about Adventurers League, it is D&D's official play campaign. Uh, that means you can create an uh, AL character, which is short for uh, Adventurers League, uh, an AL character and take it to your friendly local game store, a, a convention, a charity event, uh, even you know your own home, even on top of a lighthouse, even in space, even far underground in a coal mine, wherever an Adventurers League event is taking place, and it's up to you. You can organize that uh, on your own, uh, but that your character will fit in and be a part of that campaign and uh, enjoy all the stuff that is uh, going on there. So uh, there are a lot of folks who play in Adventurers League stuff all around the world, uh, and part of what we wanted to do in 2019 was a highlight that stuff a little bit more and, and as well uh, update everyone about what's been happening. I know, AL in space uh, is Stroradanta, uh, but I think we can maybe get the astronauts on the International Space Station playing some Dungeons & Dragons. What do you think? I think if we can get folks in the Big Bang Theory uh, 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 playing as much as they have been over the years and uh, what they're doing now, uh, then I think space should be totally fine. The miniatures might not work. They might float around, so maybe invest in some Velcro or magnets for them, but I think we can totally make it happen. Excuse me. Uh, so, right, back on to Adventurers League news. Mm. You all ready for this? Um, the Season 8 trilogy, The Skull Square Murders, is available now on DungeonMastersGuild.com. Um, these Adventures League models have leveled up with a more graphic layout, um, so they have a whole bunch of artwork there to uh, kind of spark your imagination and use them. I recommend printing out these adventures as much as you can and showing off the artwork, um, hopefully um, in uh, uh, color, in full color, but you know, even black and white can help. Um, the admins have done a great job of uh, incorporating feedback from the community, and that was... Uh, something that people definitely communicated out there that they missed having printer friendly versions of the artwork uh, as well as the adventures themselves. So this trilogy includes now a printer friendly alternative, uh, which is especially great for conventions that print a whole bunch of copies so that people can use these adventures. 
Um, so there is a new community created content adventures. Uh, the code for that is CCCOCC02. Um, and it's called Feast of the Moon by Jeremy Hawk Halter. Uh, and it's newly released on the Dungeon Masters Guild. So check that out. All pre proceeds for this adventure will go towards uh, the Dungeons and Dragons Extra Life team. Um, I believe, which I think is fantastic. Uh, Feast of the Moon details uh, festivals galore lining the streets, parks, and courtyards of Thentia. It is the Feast of the Moon, and all are gathered to remember loved ones and friends that have departed this world and to pay homage to their ancestors. Uh, but at the celebration in the Brambles, followers of Kalimbor host a stage where revelers tell tales of heroic deeds of their lineage. One tall tale gets out of hand, and the city must itself pay the price. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, it's, it's an adventure that's designed for heavy role play uh, over uh, a lot of combat, which I particularly enjoy. Uh, so jump into that if you can. Um, all characters are invited to tell the stories of their ancestors to the other characters. Uh, and I think that's, that's fantastic. It's a great way to get out um, backstory um, that may not be, uh, um, you know, that might be trapped in note form. Let me say that. There is a lot, you know, even, you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of talk within the D&D Twitter community about backstory uh, and how important it is and how writing something in note form doesn't necessarily mean it is canon uh, until it, it enters play. Uh, so I think that's really fascinating. And this adventure um, is a great way to kind of get that out there. Uh, so that's, that's pretty fantastic. Um, so... Uh, Check out that adventure. Again, it is called Feast of the Moon by Jeremy Hawkhalter. It's up on the Dungeon Masters Guild right now. And if any of that sounds up your alley, check it out. Um, I wanted to show some other fun things, including um, some photos from an Adventurers League event that took place in Mexico City, Mexico. Uh, very cool. They are taken from uh, a group called the Tabula Core gaming group uh, or gaming club uh, they just started their adventurers league group and these pictures are their first uh, adventurers league gaming session uh, they played into the border kingdoms and the peculiar case of something feline so check out some of these photos uh, of what it was like uh, playing at this first uh, D, &D uh, event at this club in mexico city very cool i love uh <laughs> that circle uh, assortment of dice uh, there in front of uh, that gentleman there on the right. That is right up my alley, and it feels like some of the amazing um, uh, dice collection that I've, I've been able to accumulate over the years. Uh, they, I love that they have such a cool, clean space with, in order to play Dungeons & Dragons. I don't want to let them know about all of the spaces uh, that I've been talking about. And then this is the cover for Feast of the Moon uh, that is available now on uh, Adventures League. Uh, I'm sorry, on DungeonMastersGuild.com. Uh, I didn't realize that was there, so now I get to show that off too. Um, so, yeah, again, these are the pictures from uh, this group in Mexico City. If you would like to send in your photos of the uh, Adventures League group that you're involved in, you can do so, and I will uh, hopefully show them online here on during D&D &D News. Uh, the way for you to do that is uh, at uh, community at dndadventurersleague.org. Um, we will throw that in the chat as well, but it is... Uh, community at d letter n d adventurers league dot org uh, and the d and d adventurers league is all one word obviously with no hyphens or things like that um, so yeah love to love to get more images of that spread the word even if you don't have any images yourself uh, spread that email address out to folks and hopefully we'll get more in to be able to show off uh, because I really love that we uh, get to give high fives to um, folks who are running Adventures League stuff around the world. And I really mean around the world. Uh, I want to show off, uh, as I said, uh, folks playing underwater, playing in space, playing uh, all over the place. Uh, and uh, that just rhymed like a Dr. Seuss book, so sorry about that. Uh, but get in as you can, because uh, I think it's super cool. Um, also, the things that are up on the Dungeon Masters Guild, uh, I mentioned that a few times in that previous little bit there, but the Dungeon Masters Guild uh, dot com is a place for you to publish your Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition creations for fun and profit. Uh, it's the only platform where you can publish adventures and supplements within the Forgotten Realms, uh, within Ravenloft, Ravnica, and other wizards uh, uh, settings and, and intellectual properties out there. So uh, if 
you haven't been able to check out DMs Guild, you should. Um, there is so much fun stuff on there. A lot of the creators are uh, making things that I think would be right up your alley. I think a lot of folks have been like, where are these type of adventures? Where are these type of adventures? Uh, they're not coming from official Dungeons and Dragons, but a lot of them are coming from folks just like you who saw that uh, need or that that niche out there and, uh, and, and filled it with uh, amazing adventures, uh, mechanics, rules, ways to enhance your game in any way. Uh, there, if you look for it, it's up there on the Dungeon Masters Guild, and I suggest uh, you you download some and uh, you know get some money back into the pockets of the folks who make it. So definitely do that um, if you can. And there's a couple of things I wanted to highlight right now uh, before after I take this sip of water. Hold on. Mm. So, um, cartoonist and narrative designer Jen Vaughn, you may know her from the D20 Dames podcast. She was instrumental in putting together the Gil, um, I'm sorry, the podcast of Ravnica um, series that we had up on Dungeon Delve round about the release of uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica in November. If you haven't checked out those adventures, you totally should. There are 10, one for each of the 10 guilds in Ravnica. Great way to find out how to play Dungeons and Dragons in that world. It's pretty awesome. Um, go check it out. Uh, but Jen, uh, again, got all those folks together and she released something called The Experiments of Dr. Skull Dial, a level uh, two, two, uh, levels two through four adventure set in Ravnica, and that's really, really full of puzzles. Um, it was originally played as the Is It League adventure in Podcast of Ravnica. So if you listen to that and say, hey, I want to run that adventure, you totally can uh, by downloading the Experiments of Dr. Skull Dial uh, from the Dungeon Masters Guild and uh, check it out. Jen is... Uh, as I said, amazing creator, and uh, her skills at putting this together were pretty awesome. Uh, the fact that she is a uh, cartoonist and artist, uh, in addition to being a narrative designer, definitely helps uh, the presentation there. So check it out while you can. The other thing I want to uh, call out is a uh, class, uh, something called the Reflectionist. Uh, I saw people talking about this online, and I think it's pretty interesting. So this is published by uh, Casey Machado and Dorotheo Rosenblatt. Um, and I'm just going to read this verbatim just so I don't get it wrong because it's kind of a complex idea for a class uh, that's available. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk through this right now, uh, and then I'll start throwing uh, you guys what's going on with the latest D&D Rewind. We've got that video queued up and ready for you guys. Um, so, and then actually let me see if there's actually uh, – oh, okay. So, yeah, here's the, here's the cover for the Reflectionist. Um, so – whether gaining positional advantages on the battlefield or using their broadened outlook to navigate social challenges, reflectionists embody an understanding that maintaining multiple perspectives can yield powerful potential. The reflectionist class is a versatile combination of modest spell casting, martial combat options, and potent class features that will delight both a player's roleplay and tactical sides. Its signature conjure reflection ability enables reflectionist characters to de to create a duplicate of themselves as seen through a different perspective, thus enabling it to harness new potential energy to fuel its abilities. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I can't wait for you to check it out. Um, the one little final note here, uh, and I think it might, for those of you who have played this video game, might kind of cement what the reflectionist is all about. But if you've played any of the Persona series of um, JRPGs, uh, on uh, PlayStation, you might kind of get where the reflectionist is coming from. Uh, the characters in that series um, have alter egos that after they take in kind of a, uh, a demonic or a spirit uh, that kind of, that allows that gives them a heightened combat abilities, um, and uh, they're kind of a reflection. The, you know, the, the, their their appearance is a reflection of their their true passion personality. Uh, and so the reflectionist class here for Dungeons and Dragons seems like it incorporates a lot of that uh, kind of way of thinking. Uh, so yeah, if the one one reviewer said it likened it to this to playing Persona in D and D, uh, and for that reason alone, he should really go check it out. Uh, I want to make sure I showed off this awesome cover by Jen Vaughn of the Experiments of Doctor Skull Dial. Pretty amazing. I love the bold colors here uh, about that. Is it adventure? I love how she's got blue and red in there as well, uh, talking about it being an is it a, a, a type of guild. So check that out if you're interested as well too. All right, I am potentially going to... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, wait, hold on. Never mind. 
I thought I wasn't going to have it, but I have it now. I've got these buttons that uh, Mr. Pelham Green put together, and they're amazing. Uh, but now I'm ready to show you D&D &D Rewind. We've been doing this for the last couple of weeks. Um, it is a way for us to show off highlights from the most recent um, Dungeons & Dragons content that is going up on the twitch.tv slash DND channel. Uh, we culminate this from a bunch of clips that people have been posting on Twitch and other places. Uh, so you can always help add and or nominate clips that we will show off in this here video. Uh, but this is what it looks like for this week, uh, the week of uh, the ended on February 11th. Uh, here, why don't you go ahead and check out this D&D Rewind. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome. It's a brand new show. I don't have to say Tomb of Annihilation or Waterdeep Dragon Heist. It's a brand new thing, and it's the first episode, so I don't have to remember what episode it is. This is the only time I will definitely be right. This is episode number one of Jace Bellerin Must Die, and I get to play with new people, and I get to do a new thing, and I'm so friggin' excited. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, friends. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw a big thread about this. Like, what are all these... Big name people doing and wizards. Yeah, but I don't know who they were talking about. I mean, were they talking about Matthew Lillard? Were they talking about Bad Eye Adam? Were they talking about Bob Salvatore? I mean, we had the Adobe yeah. winner in, but I don't think that's the big name they're talking about. Well, I know that she had mentioned Bab. Bab. Um, and Bab was indeed here. Yeah. Um, and he was doing some creative consulting with us yeah. on a, an upcoming product, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, boss, I meant to give this to you. I got you a gift. Thanks again for the candy. But anyways, um, oh, no. here, it's in case you have trouble lighting fire in the future, all you have to do is just say, I'm scared. You, you say the words, oh, no. I'm scared, no! as you're holding a torch, and it goes, <laughs> and eyes all lock onto your group. He is with domains of dread, it doesn't take anything really to get you into the story. You just say, you wake up. The mists have borne you to a strange domain and deal with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's how a lot of great, uh, I mean, we mentioned a whole bunch of uh, X-Files or, or Twilight Zone or other anthology series like that where there's very little need to buy in other than like, here's your circumstances, what Correct. do you do? Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it can be a fun uh, exercise for a dungeon master as well. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, I want to do both. I'd like to move in such a way that I can breathe on Boom Boom and the Destroyer. <laughs> I I got breath weapon. I went. <laughs> I've been growling it out this whole time, and I just went <laughs> right at the two of them. Um, I, I did want to so... point out that my career is now. I, my career is complete. Someone said I want to move. I want to hit both Boom Boom and the Destroyer. Um, <laughs> my next rock album. It's a rug. And then the rug leaps out and attacks you. Oh, no. Not again. The rug's fighting me. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one in the room? Yes. yes you're the only so one in the room. It's a rug. Oh, God, the rug's fighting me. The rug is fighting me. We have a, we have a rogue rug. <laughs> what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the color code for this? Code All right. It makes, it makes an attack against you. Oh, my no. God. It rolled a crit. Um, no. <laughs> because they can provide employment to others. You see what I'm saying here? I see. So those who have lost the most need to uh, recover fastest. Uh, therefore, they can pour those resources into the hands of those who need them. Sounds very trickle-down economics. I was just about to say, like... Yes, that is a great term. <laughs> yeah, trickle-down we'll economics. I like it. Reagan <laughs> Your middle name, Reagan, by chance. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Take your scalps. Tell them though I find so little with someone. Ew. Ew. This game is gross. Also, why couldn't I take anybody else's scalp? I would like to immediately slap both of their intertwined hands away from the food, like, oh. smack. Like. Oh, oh, okay. And I just scowl. Okay. And uh, Constantina. Say, I, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yara. No, I just wanted to say, um, you smell very nice. 
Who are you saying that to? To Constantina? No, to, to Vasily. Oh, yeah. She's <laughs> just like, ugh. Constantina, what, is, what are these? What did you do? First of all, these are people. Um, and I know you don't really like people, but sometimes they just... All right. Uh, pretty good stuff there. Uh, I loved uh, that TK Johnson uh, got about, what, five different clips there is uh, when they were uh, shown. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, shout out to TK. All of the amazing stuff that uh, they do in the uh, Twitch moderation is very much appreciated. Um, and uh, they are a very good role player in their own right. So that's pretty awesome. Um, one thing there, there was a clip, uh, from a long time ago. I don't know why the Domains of Dread, uh, lore you should know popped in there, but, uh, you know, that's, that's what's odd sometimes about depending only on the clips that folks are be able to do, um, uh, the, uh, that some of them, you know, sometimes people clip ones from older content and it's hard to, to kind of figure out which one is which, um, uh, but it was a good, it was a good, uh, discussion no matter what. So pretty awesome. Uh, I love it all. What do you guys think uh, about D&D Rewind? Any way, as always, to improve uh, what we're doing there? Um, always looking for feedback. I think I asked for it on Twitter a while ago, but I'm always available at Greg Tito if you want to shout out uh, other clips or other ways to uh, improve what's going on there. For now, we're concentrating on stuff that is either broadcast or hosted here from the D&D channel, uh, but we'll eventually, I believe... Um, you know, expand that out to involve a whole bunch of other different uh, parts of the D&D community. But we're just trying to get get a base line started here, and then we'll we'll move on from from there. Uh, so it's, that's kind of cool. I'm glad you're able to to dug it. Uh, more fade transitions. Ooh, I like that. I I think you might be. I think I mean, what we really need is more wipes. You know, we'll have kind of those soft star wipes. Um, uh, yeah. So let's do more of that. Hold on, I'm letting my, my wife know I'm going to be home late. Uh, here it's... Uh, um, so, yeah, uh, that's D&D Rewind. We got about 20 minutes coming before Dice Camera Action. Episode 129 will be popping off right here. Um, it is going to be pretty exciting. It is... I still can't believe I, that number goes up every week uh, to 129. Uh, it just boggles the mind. So I think that's really cool um, that they are uh, continuing to tell that story and evolving what's happening. Um, and uh, yeah, here's to 199, 299, 499 uh, episodes of Dice Camera Action. I know everyone here in the chat is ready for that. So make it make it a deal. Make it happen. Um, I think you might be right. Uh, going back to, I see some people pointing out some fun ways to improve D&D Rewind. I see a couple of comments. Uh, Ravina666 as a theme song. That's a great idea. We're using some, some um, you know, unlicensed music that's available for that type of thing. But I, I would love it. Uh, if anybody wants to compose anything out there for D and D Rewind, let me know. Um, we're, we'll certainly, you know, kick a few bucks towards you. We don't want uh, anything for free. But if you got something uh, that would fit that type of modularity, so you know, it needs to be short and long enough to be able to have a longer rewind show to a shorter one you know that type of thing uh it's it's not, a, not an easy task to jump into but very very important um the other thing was uh community clips i saw ether dark one say community clips i think that's a really really strong idea in fact that was something that we had wanted to do as far back as um when we started up doing all of our content here on the DD twitch channel was to do basically a, a community roundup type show uh that involved people from all around the D&D community who are playing online um, and uh, and uh, call them out and, and highlight all that. So uh, not, not a bad idea. I mean, might do something in that format type of thing um, while also, um, uh, you know, maybe maybe a longer format show is the way to do something like that. So, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of possibilities out there, but I think it's really cool. Snacks. Yes, Lauren, uh, Oba Crazy. We will definitely add more snacks. I could use with a snack. I'm not going to lie. I have eaten, just so everyone knows, maybe this is why I also look tired. I have eaten a single um uh, z bar do you guys know what a z bar is anybody have um kids they're basically cliff bars they're made by cliff bars but they're smaller so i had a not whole cliff bar uh for kids called the z bar uh in my belly which i ate about 
two hours ago. Uh, so, yeah, I think I need some snacks is what I'm trying to say. There is consensus. Mm. Right, Cliff for Kids. Feed Tito. I know. I just I haven't been taking care of I got all the coffee in the world that I could possibly need, but the, uh, the food, not so much. Need to make that happen. So uh, there are more and more fun things to discuss about what's happening in the D&D world. We went through all of uh, what's happening in uh, the Dungeon Masters Guild, as well as um, letting you know about Adventurers League happenings. Uh, and we did our D&D Rewind. So there are a couple other fun things that I wanted to show you, including... Um, here, let's see. Let's see how funny this is. I'm going to throw this up there and see what you guys think. This was an Instagram post. Dice cream sandwich posts. Uh, this is basically dice porn here, if you've ever seen it. Uh, those are some hot-looking dice sets there. I love the mixture of materials uh, going from wood to, what was that, obsidian? I don't know if it's obsidian, but it looks like obsidian. Um and uh, I just love also Dice Cream Sandwich. It's very, very cool. I love seeing everyone's dice collections, especially one that looks quite so orderly and nice as this one. I also love, yes, I mean, they're all at, this, at the right highest number there, uh, all of the polyhedral dice. And then the six, six-sided die there, counting down from six to one. Whoosh. I mean, there's just something about that that makes me look happy uh, right there. So that's, that's pretty cool. Thank you for, for what is that, Dice Cream Sandwich uh, from Vancouver, British Columbia. Thank you for posting that. I love that it's been spread around the world there. Um, there's another fun thing I wanted to show you guys. Arrows. The slings of arrows of outrageous fortune. Uh, that, was a double, that was a double reference there. That was both Hamlet and Billy Madison being uh, referenced there. Um, but uh, these are pretty funny. Uh, a whole bunch of different arrows uh, and how they might look, including the double cut arrow, the steel arrow, the poison flame arrow. You know, there's something about a flaming poison arrow uh, that doesn't make much sense. But the oil arrow is one that I know a lot of people in uh, previous editions of Dungeons and Dragons loved all that fun stuff. Um, and then the enchanted blood arrow just makes me feel a little bit uh, uh, unhappy. Let's, let's, let's say that right there. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, cool. I love, I love seeing how different, um, uh, you know, uh, weapons of, of choice are used by the D&D community, and uh, it's fun stuff there. Uh, here's a final little post from uh, Rat King, uh, Wes Cordell. How do you make your players? Talk to them. How do you do it? Talk to them. What makes your table so? Talking to them. Social contracts and expectations at a table make all the difference, and uh, your players are responsible for the experience too. I couldn't agree more. Um, I this dovetails a little bit. I don't know if this is going to go off topic, um, but yesterday I saw a whole bunch of people talking about a Kickstarter for a device that would allow uh, couples to know when either of them are uh, in the mood for other activities. Um, and I think the resounding response for the internet was, what happened to just talking to people? Uh, just talk to them. That's, that's what communication is all about. And uh, I think that also sums up this, this tweet here uh, from Wes uh, that is, uh, you just, you just got to talk to people. Uh, talk to your players. It's something I noticed uh, uh, in, in my D&D game last night to a certain extent. Uh, one of the players, I, I mentioned this just, just earlier, one of the players is, uh, you know, w was kind of expressing like, oh, I remember back in the day we just would go on adventures and fight and, and there wasn't really, um, you know, as much role playing and talking about that stuff. Um, he was saying that, you know, not necessarily saying he wants more of that but i got that's what he was saying and so i made sure to have a lot more combat to end out last night's session and kind of as a mental note when he is a player who's going to be attending the sessions to make sure that we are keeping him interested and that just comes from listening and communicating with your players and so i would love for more dungeon masters uh, and players out there to listen almost as much as they talk because uh listening is where we get to uh to uh, learning and, and you know building a better community. I mean, you can't have any kind of community without uh, communication. It's right there. 
communication, community. And it makes perfect sense. So um, thank you to all of you who realized I was going to be derailing into something that was not necessarily uh, live stream friendly. Uh, but I did it. I think I did. I think I navigated through uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that topic. What do you think, right? Talk to people. That's what Lauren and Lauren is saying, and I agree. Mm. All right. So um, there are uh, amazing things happening on this here Twitch channel that I want to make sure I let everybody know about as we get ready for Dice Camera Action to begin uh, in just about, uh, let's say, 11 minutes uh, is when the intro will start rolling. Um, we are here on Tuesday, but I want to make sure everyone knows that the Broken Pact RPG is back. They had their first episode of Season 2 last night uh, at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. That's Dungeon Master Ruben Bressler um, uh, with players Riley Silverman, Ashlyn Rose, Gaurav Galati, and Jordan Pridgen um, playing through the second season of their campaign through uh, content that's available in Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, so make sure you check back in if you did not know that they were back on. Uh, apologies for any kind of lack of communication with all that. The Snowmageddon has been affecting a lot of what we've been going on. Uh, but they are great, and uh, we hope that you are able to jump in uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, they are preceded on Mondays uh, by our friends, the Dice Friends, uh, from Loading Ready Run. And they are playing through By Law and Order, which is also set in the Ravnica universe. Dungeon Master Kathleen DeVere is there uh, with players, players uh, Sergey Yeager, Cameron Lauder, Ian Horner, and Benjineering, uh, which uh, it always makes for a fun time. I love the pun that's going on there for um, I mean, I, you either have a D and D show that has an amazing pun in the title, or it is got some uh, uh, amazing uh, evocative nature of it, like Broken Pact. Uh, so there you go. Uh, this morning we hosted Don't Split the Podcast Network, uh, the Demon Play. You saw a clip from that during D and D Rewind. That is Dungeon Master James Intracasso uh, with uh, Rudy Basso, Lauren Urban, otherwise known as Obo Crazy, here in the chat right now. Uh, TK joins the fray and Robert Aducci. Uh, so check that out if you can. We're in D&D &D news right now, and then, of course, we got Dice Camera Action following right after this. Tomorrow, though, I want to make sure everybody tunes in to the third uh, Dungeons & Dragons show that is set in the world of Ravnica here on this Twitch channel, and that's Roll20 Presents. Jace Bellerin must die. Dungeon Master Adam Koval does amazing stuff with Carlos Luna, TK Johnson, Masood Hack. And uh, or Hake, uh, apologies there, uh, Katie Mary. Um, great stuff. You saw some of the imagery also in D&D Rewind. That was one of the many clips that featured TK. Uh, so check that out if you possibly can. And uh, I also just love the evocative nature of that name there, combining a known planeswalker from Ravnica, Jace Bellerin. You know, he's mind erasing techniques are well known to blue magic players around the world, uh, but he's pretty fun. Uh, Topaz Horizon, thank you for subscribing. You're a good person, and I think most Horizons look like Topaz when the sun is setting, so it's an apt name, too. I love it. Heroes of the... Oh, so yeah, so tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we are probably not going to have a live Dragon Plus. That still is 2 TBD. Uh, it's a Dungeons & Doodles that is on the schedule. It may happen, though, so, so stay tuned. It all depends on whether... Uh, Bart Carroll is able to travel into the office to make that happen. I don't know. Actually, now that I'm thinking about my own travels in here, it might be 60, 40, 70, 30 uh, in favor of Bart being able to make it in and make Dungeons and Doodles happen. So tune in at 1 p.m. Pacific time for that. Um, that, if you don't are not familiar with that segment of Dragon Plus, that's where he takes suggestions from you guys, the audience, uh, from Twitter, from all over, and uh, gives them to some cartoonists uh, who draw based on those prompts, uh, what they're able to show, and then we, we, we uh, show the audience what the cartoonists were able to create. Uh, it's always a good time. Enjoy the freeform creativity that can happen on that on that segment. And uh, even if it doesn't go next week, it will be happening in weeks to come, so look for that. Heroes of the Veil vale is uh, hosted uh, on this channel. That's Dungeon Master Todd Kenrick and uh, one of the players, Adam Bradford, from D&D Beyond. Lauren uh, Urban, Obo Crazy, is also in that one. She is from D&D Beyond, uh, doing amazing work there. You can also find TJ Storm, Hope Lavelle, and Jennifer Kretschmer joining out that cast. 
They are doing great work. I've heard nothing but positive and fun, awesome things from uh, the yarns that Dungeon Master Todd Kenrick is spinning in that show. And I hope you check it out uh, here. And then we'll be hosting after that. Acquisitions Incorporated, the C-Team, uh, with uh, Jerry Holkins, Kate Welch, Amy Falcone, Ryan Hartman, and Chris Straub. They are back in the saddle for their new season. And uh, we were 90% they're going to be able to start uh, or, or, or have that go live um, but if it doesn't, uh, well, you know, it's mostly probably because of all the snow and rain and all the fun stuff that's happening going on. On Thursday, we are hosting a D&D Beyond dev update with Adam Bradford talking to you, the fans, about all the latest developments of that's going on with Dungeons & Dragons Beyond, as well as all of the fun stuff uh, that he's working on uh, in the future. Uh, that's 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow on, or, sorry, on Thursday. Encounter Roleplay Learn by Play is at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time, followed by Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, uh, and then Welch's Game Juice um, at 3 p.m. Pacific Time. That's where Kate Welch goes through the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition from Beamdog, I believe for the first time, and checks out all the fun stuff that's happening there. So if you're interested in finding out her specific game design uh, sensibilities as well as just her entertaining nature in general, I love that she's engaging more and more with people in the chat, and uh, you should you should pop in and join if you're interested. A in Baldur's Gate, B in Kate Welch, or D C C in uh, everything fun thing going on Dungeons and Dragons. I was gonna see D everything fun going on with D and D, but you know maybe I should just skip C. That's probably what I should have done. Uh, and then we'll be hosting the return of Critical Role at 7 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday. Check that out if you can. Friday we will have again no uh, um, uh, spoilers and swag. No live uh broadcast of dragon talk we will be starting from uh the idol champions of uh binwin plays idol champions that's scott kurtz from pvp online playing through uh some fun stuff with idol champions and Corey cassoni playing alongside with him and then we have tales from the mist 6 p.m pacific time on friday that's where dungeon master tk johnson Leads four amazing Ravenloft natives uh, through classic adventures in different domains of dread. Maybe that was a good reason why in D&D Rewind we were able to catch up with Chris Perkins' thoughts about what happens with the domains of dread that are out there. Uh, that's a good uh, uh, praise for what's happening. Um, and there are a whole bunch of mysterious guests, dark secrets, and tragic destinies awaiting the heroes of Tales from the Mists. Uh, will they stand? When the fire of revolution burns through Ravenloft, I love this idea of the people who are trapped in the domain of dread that is Ravenloft revolting against their vampire master. Uh, it sounds revolting, but it could be really fun. Uh, so hopefully you have been checking out all of that. On Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be hosting Trace Albus. Uh, that's with Dungeon Master Mori uh, Mario Artagon. Um, and uh, Teos will be joining uh, that stream, which is really awesome. Uh, Teos Abadia, also known as Alpha, Alpha Stream and or Lover of Flumps, uh, will be joining along with Derek Ruiz, Morgan Citarian, and Mike Ballas. Uh, so it is a Spanish language D&D stream, uh, which I think is uh, super great to be able to see folks in different languages uh, participating in the fun that is Dungeons & Dragons. Watching it live, you may not be able to see a translation of what they are talking about, but when they post it to YouTube, the translations are available there. So uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, you might be able to get it in real time, maybe even learn some Spanish uh, along the way. So do that. Uh, and then Rivals of Waterdeep is doing amazing work at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Sundays. Um, Dungeon Master Sharif Jackson is taking the reins for this season and doing a fantastic job of it. He is joined by players Tanya DePass, Brandon Stennis, Carlos Luna, Serena Marie, and Cicero Holmes. They do good work. I think, I think you should check it out. They're going to be doing a live finale of this season of Rivals of Waterdeep from PAX East in Boston, uh, and then it will be streamed. Uh, so check that out. I will be there in the audience cheering on all the fun stuff that they will be going on. I believe that's Saturday night, uh, but you can check out uh, their their Twitter feed at Rivals of Waterdeep for more information on that, but I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, to be able to give them some high fives in Boston when I'm there for PAX East. Uh, and then finally for this weekend at 4 p.m. Pacific time, we're hosting D4. That's where two Dungeon Masters, Dustin Fletcher and Devin Henderson, uh, put uh, bring uh, uh, players Ethan Monsoor, Goblin Katie, Rhea Watkins, Patrick Logan, and uh, Katie through what's going on with 
Waterdeep uh, Dragon Heist, and they are using the Beetle and Graham's Platinum Box and the Sirenscape Waterdeep Dragon House Science Soundscape. So you can see all of those pieces of Dungeons and Dragons content in action watching D4. They also uh, spend a lot of care in dressing the set and the miniatures and all that stuff so shout out to dustin for making that look awesome and it really does so watch that if you can all right that's sunday and then again i will be out of the office for most of next week uh, but pelham green bart carroll satine phoenix and the rest of the team uh here including uh, uh lauren urban uh oh, at oboe crazy and tk joins the fray tk johnson uh we're we'll be doing all of the fun streaming in my absence. Is that true, Pelham? That is true. That's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, I, I, I hope you uh, uh, watch as much as you can because there's a lot coming out there. Not sure exactly what's going to happen with D&D news next week. There may be an alternate in here. We will, at the very least, show off uh, D&D Rewind on YouTube. Uh, but we will uh, be back, or at least I will be back, talking to you directly uh, starting in, I guess it'll be the end of February, right? So it'll be... Uh, I'll be doing the next D&D News on February 26th and then doing uh, Dragon Talk Live recording starting on March 1st. So uh, I won't see you for a little bit. I will be posting on Twitter. You can follow me there about all the fun stuff that's happening in New York uh, as well as on Instagram. I'm at Greg underscore Tito. Um, it's always been great. I'll be gone for a couple of weeks, but I'll be back. And uh, I hope you enjoy this episode 129 of Dice Camera Action starting in just a few minutes. Thanks, everybody. You're the best. <laughs>